the beginning was the Word. The Word was first. The Word was present to God. God present to the Word. The Word was God in readiness for God from day one. Everything was created through Him. Nothing, not one thing came to being without Him. Not me, not even you. What came into existence was life, and that life was light to live by. This life light blazed out of the darkness, and that darkness couldn't put it out. Oh no, it was, and still is, the real thing. You see, every person who enters life, he came to bring it to light. He was in the world, and the world was there only because of him. But the world didn't even notice. He came to his own people, but even they didn't want him. But thankfully, because of grace, we all still have a choice. Because he promised whoever does want him and believes he is who he says he is, will be their true selves, their child of God's selves. But these children of God are not just born of the natural. They're born in the spirit, chosen by God and held in his hip pocket from the beginning of time until now. The word became flesh and blood and came to give life to all who believe. So I have to ask myself, what do I believe? As soon as those words leave the tip of my tongue, as soon as my heart cracks open just far enough to be searched, I start to hear it. That same voice that spoke the world into motion, it still tells oceans where to lay. He is here with us even right now, whispering love into the hardest parts of my heart, speaking light into the deepest, darkest parts of my soul, offering hope with the same four words that started it all. Let there be light. darkest night you bring the morning song sing over me you know I need you will lead us all there is a light to see the human heart the breath of life redeeming every 
Chris and Faye. We're so excited to see y'all here. We're gonna have a great time. So listen, what we're gonna do, we're gonna throw 30 seconds on the clock. I want you to get out of your seat, meet somebody new, ask them if they got their shopping done. Go for it. What's up, everybody? Merry Christmas. We are so glad you guys are with us. Christmas is one of our favorite things we do every I mean, year. it's just so magical. So magical. And speaking of that, we are here with some of our band guys, and we're talking about how unmagical today's Christmas music has gotten. It's a little old. Yeah, like, like first thing I want to know is, who keeps letting Grandma out of the house? I mean, seriously. Poor thing's been ran over by that reindeer like 51 times. I mean, it's incredible. And will somebody just please give the kids some shoes? Oh, please. <laughs> yes. And yes, by give now, him some shoes. Santa baby is like a full-grown man by now. Okay? <laughs> He's got a mortgage. That's true. Kids to feed of his own. Yes. Crazy. So what we decided we're going to do is, well, we want to give you guys something new and fresh. And, well, we want to write the greatest Christmas song ever. The greatest Christmas song ever. So we're going to have to go to the experts on this one, the people that really know a thing or two about Christmas. Yeah. Um, and uh, not these oh. guys. No. <laughs> no, 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 not these. The real experts. That's right. The big guns. Yeah. You ready? Let's do this. Yeah. So this is Christmas time, right? Yeah. You guys, you guys excited about Christmas? Yeah. All right. So uh, what is Christmas all about? Jesus' birthday. Cool. Jesus' birthday. Where was Jesus born? Calvary. 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 Jesus was Jesus born was on Calvary. Born on Calvary. I'm just guessing. Jerusalem. Whatever. Jerusalem. Okay. A hill. He was born in a hill. He was born in a hill on what, Calvary. Um. <laughs> what, what, Nash? Were there... I don't know. <laughs> were, were there... <laughs> God's gown. God's gown. God's gown? No, God town. God, God town. town. God town. Like what? in the United States? Or? Who else was there the night that Jesus was born? Like sheep. Sheep. Yeah. Horses. Uh-huh. Okay. Cow. Persons. Um, persons. Little persons. Yeah. I'm thinking about ducks. Ducks were there. Gorilla, dog, Gorillas. Angel. Angels. Yeah. The Taylor Swift came along and sang, Welcome to New York. Welcome to New York. Joe. 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 Joe was there. What was who was Joe? He was Mary's wife. Joe, Joe was Mary's Mary wife. Joe. Heisman? Heisman's. Heisman's. The Heisman's. The girl too. Like. <laughs> what presents did you think the, the, the wife would make? Teddy bear, some sandals, a given star, and that doll I need. A given star. They gave him a given star. Mm -hmm. Okay. A sword. It can blast. What do you think a wise man would look like? Nice, nice um, outfits and some gifts. What did it smell like in the in the bar? It smells like dead animals. Right. It's like a it's like a boy's locker room, then, poop. basically. It smells like poop. poop. It, can, it smells like boys. I'm poop. Poop. Exercising, like how milk when they um do that thing, like they do their thing in this bucket. Oh, the milk, they milk. It was smell like that's inside of them. That's inside of them. Like, it smelled like that. It smelled like cow milk. Guys, if we were gonna write a song <laughs> about Christmas, what would you name it? What about Christmas tree? Christmas, Christmas tree? tree. What would it sound like? Um. Christmas tree, Christmas tree, it is the best. Christmas tree, Christmas tree, it has presents. How about Christmas? Just Christmas. Rocks in my town. Oh, like if you're gonna write the perfect Christmas, Christmas song. Christmas is about family. And Jesus is a point in a red bubble. Shake it off! You would sing Shake It Off? It was the most magical night of the year. 
The most magical night ever. The most magical night of ever. Not year, ever. Ever. All right. All right. Good job, guys. Good job. High five. Hey, guys. We got some stuff we're particularly psyched out of our minds about. Yeah, there's some lines in here. When you get to them, you're going to be like, yes! It's going to be awesome. It's going to be so good. All right. Have fun with it, guys. We'll see you in the studio. What's a Jalousia? Let me paint you a picture of a cabin in a hill on Calvary, a town called Delusia. The night was pretty much silent. And got town Delusia. There were sheep, ducks, and gorillas Giving gifts to baby Jesus A blessing sword, a giving star And that is all I know They brought teddy bears and sandals To lay before the manger The shepherds, the angels And Mary's wife named Joe It's Christmas just Christmas When the Heismans bring those gifts Looking good in those nice outfits and It's Christmas, Christmas. Just, Just Christmas. Christmas And all the angels and Taylor Swift Sing together On Christmas Just Christmas Christmas tree, Christmas tree, 
sing some songs that we all know. So come on, get up on your feet. Put your hands together with us.
right, y'all, we're gonna put a new little spin on this one. So when you catch it, go ahead and sing along with us. Come on, put your hands together. What's up, everybody? Merry Christmas. Man, it's great to see you guys tonight. You all sound good, most of you. You look good, most of you. There's a lot of sequins and sparkles and ugly sweaters, and I love it. It's amazing. Merry Christmas, man. It's great having you guys with us. There's especially a lot of ugly sweaters over here. I won't point anybody out, but I just noticed the one caught my eye. It was beautiful. Do this real quick. Why don't you give somebody around you a good old high five and then give them a good ho, ho, ho and then have a seat for me for just a second. For those of you that may not know me, I'm Trey. I'm one of the pastors here and it is my privilege to get to welcome you, um, especially those of you that are guests. Thank you so much for carving some time out of this extremely busy season uh, to come and celebrate Christ's birth here with us at Christmas at Bay. Uh, we're so honored, we're so blessed that you chose to come and worship with us this weekend. Thank you so much. And just to, just to let you guys know, we got a gift for you on your way out tonight. Um, so there's a welcome center, there's a room on the other side of the exits. Um, if you are new, this is maybe one of your first times here, stop by for just a moment. We got this gift for you and we won't keep you long, I promise you, uh, but we just would love to be able to give you a high five and just thank you for being here with us. I mean, and also if you are new, just to kind of put your minds at ease, your kids are having way Way more fun than you're having I promise you all right back in in kids town they are having a blast this weekend um, they're experiencing a production called the great Christmas rescue um, in which Batman is there because what Christmas is complete without Batman and the Grinch um, and Olaf can we give it up for Olaf we love some Olaf right so your kids are having a blast, they're having fun, and hopefully they're gonna give them lots of sugar so that, you know, the rest of your night's just, just amazing, okay? Um, and as soon as service is over, Olaf and Grinch and Batman, they'll be out in the commons so you can take pictures with them. Uh, you can put it all over social media and let people know how much fun you had tonight. This is our very last Christmas, Christmas at Bay experience. We have had 16 of these over the weekend, not including our online experience. Welcome to everybody online, by the way. Hey, right? Other than that, we've had 16 experiences, two in China, one in Honduras, four in Mobile, two in Foley, and seven right here. Come on, somebody. It's been an incredible, incredible weekend. Um, and I hate this, I hate, I hate that it's over. You guys wanna stick around for a nine o'clock? Anybody? Let's do one more of these bad boys, right? Well, we've had so much fun. I hope you have as well. I hope in the rest of the night, it's just gonna be amazing. Um, again, take some pictures, um, but we're gonna sing a few more songs. So sit back, relax, and let's sing together. Thanks. Glory, Lord of love, heart. 
thoughts unfold life hours before thee opening to the sun above melt the clouds of sin and sadness drive the dark of doubt away giver of immortal gladness fill us with the light of of unbroken praise feel it for it then it mounts and fall we meant all flashing sea singing bird and flowing fountain call us to rejoice and leave you make me joyful you make me joyful so so you make me joyful you make me joyful our hearts are so so mortals join the happy chorus which the morning stars begin father love is reigning over us brother love finds man to man
For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary didn't know what to think. Don't be frightened, Mary. The angel said, God has chosen to bless you. You'll become pregnant and you'll have a son. You're to name him Jesus. And he will be very great and he'll be called the Son of the Most High. And Mary asked the angel, how, how can I have a baby? I'm a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby born to you will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. While Mary was still a virgin, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiance, being a just man, decided to break the engagement quietly so as not to disgrace her publicly. As he considered this, he fell asleep. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to go ahead with your marriage to Mary, for the child in her has been conceived by the Holy Spirit. She'll have a son. You shall name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him. He brought Mary home to be his wife, and she remained a virgin until her son was born. At that time, the Roman emperor decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. All had to return to their hometowns to register for the census, and Joseph, being a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea. He traveled from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, his wife, who was great with child. And while they were there, the time came 
for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her first child, a son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. So bring him inside gold. That night there were shepherds in the field outside the village guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terribly frightened, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone, a Savior, the Messiah, the Lord has been born tonight in Bethlehem, the city of David. And this is how you will recognize him, you'll find a baby lying in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes and suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host from heaven the armies of heaven praising god and saying glory to god in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward men so they ran to the village and they found mary and joseph and there was the baby lying in the manger the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about the child everyone who heard the story was astonished, but Mary kept these things in her heart. See, Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. At the same time, the wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, and they're asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star that arose, and we've come to worship him. And once again, the star appeared to them and guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over a place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house where the child and his mother were, and they fell down and they worshipped him. And they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This is Jesus. When it was time to leave, they went another way because God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. After the wise men were gone, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Joseph, get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. Stay there until I tell you to return because Herod will try and kill the child. Herod was furious. And when he learned the wise men had outwitted him, he sent soldiers to kill all the baby boys in and around Jerusalem because the wise man had told him the star had first appeared two years before. Finally, Herod died. God's angel appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Get up, Joseph. Take the child and his mother. Return to Israel. All those who wish to murder him are dead. So Joseph obeyed. He was directed in a dream to go to the hills of Galilee. And on arriving, he settled in the village of Nazareth, fulfilling the words of the prophet. He shall be called a Nazarene. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And this is the Christmas story.
Once upon a mountaintop, a little tree stood and dreamed of what she wanted to become when she grew up. The little tree looked up at the stars and said, I want to stand tall. I want for birds to make their homes in my branches, for people to find rest in my shade. I want to be a treasure of the forest. Years passed, the rain came, the sun shone, and the little tree grew tall, magnificent in her beauty. One day, a woodcutter climbed up the mountain. He looked at the tree and said, this tree is beautiful, it's perfect for me. The woodcutter began to cut down the tree. Overwhelmed with confusion, she could feel her dreams dying with each devastating blow from the axe. 
The tree's once peaceful world immediately flooded with chaos as the woodcutter brought her into a carpenter's shop. The carpenter fashioned the tree into a feed box for animals. The once beautiful tree no longer stood tall. She was coated with sawdust and filled with hay for hungry farm animals. What happened, she wondered. I wasn't meant for this. I wasn't made for all of this. All I ever wanted to do was hold treasure and be treasured. Many days and nights passed. The tree nearly forgot her dreams. But one night, a golden starlight poured over the tree as a young woman placed her newborn baby in the feed box. I wish I could make a cradle for him, her husband whispered. The mother squeezed his hand and smiled as the starlight shone on the smooth and sturdy wood. This manger is perfect, she said. Suddenly, the tree knew that she was holding the greatest treasure that the world would ever know. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Okay, let's try it one more time. Would you look at the person next to you and say Merry Christmas? Merry Christmas. That's a little better. It's great to have you with us this weekend. It's been a phenomenal weekend. And I want to say hats off to all of our volunteers, all of our campuses from, from, from Asia to Honduras to Mobile to Foley to Malbus, hundreds of people serving in our church and made a lot of this possible. Can we give those guys a big hand? And let me also say to our pastors and our staff at Bay Community, we have the best, and uh, you need to know that. Let's give those guys a big hand. Thank you for sharing this time together, and I do say thank you for enduring the closeness of this room at Malbus and the commons and getting in and out. Uh, this will be the last Christmas in this building. Uh, we'll be moving into our new worship center uh, the weekend of the 24th of January, the new year. We're really excited about that. Uh, I'm sure. So thank you for your patience in advance, and uh, we, we, we're looking forward to the, to the new year. I want to take a scripture that may not even con seem to be connected to Christmas, but I think it's the right scripture for us in this season. There are two themes that carry throughout the Bible, two big themes, the Word of God and the light of God. Uh, if you look through the Word, you're going to see those themes from front to back. The Word of God, God spoke uh, the world into being, and then the, the leaders, the prophets and the, pre uh, the priests and the teachers come along, and they use that word to guide the nation of Israel. The New Testament, you have the writings of Paul, the writings of the life of Jesus that give us directions and guidance. So this big theme, the Word of God, is from front to back. And then the other big theme is the light of God. The very first words that we have of God being recorded in Genesis is, let there be light. 
So throughout the Old Testament, God's talked about as being light, and he shines into the darkness. And, and then uh, Scripture tells us he lights our path. And then here's Jesus. He's sent as the light of the world. So these themes are all the way through Scripture. What's incredible is that both of these take center stage in creation and recreation. Here's what I mean. In the beginning, God created man in the way he wanted man to be created, and he put him in a world the way he designed the world to be. You know the story. Sin entered the world, and things have been broken and marred, and that's not the way God intended. So God decided to rescue man or recreate man from the inside out. And to do that, he had to send his son. And what we're going to look at in a scripture is John wrote a scripture, the Apostle John, and he does this brilliant job. And, and, and you see, these scriptures connect to Christmas. He connects the two mega themes throughout the scripture, and it relates back to Christmas. It's John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word. John's talking about Jesus. He's close friends. He, he, he spends a lot of time with him. He's a disciple. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and he was with God in the beginning. Here's what he's establishing. He's establishing that Jesus was there in the beginning when, with God the Father and that he is God and that he was part of the speaking the words of God. Not only is he the word of God, but he was part of the words of God as God spoke the world into being and spoke man into being. And then he came as light. He, he, he came as the light of the world. He's the light of God the Father, but he came into this world as the light of this world. So in the beginning, you have the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. All three are present. John is establishing that Jesus didn't just start in the New Testament. Jesus just didn't start in the first century. Jesus has been there the whole time, all along. Verse 3, he says, through him, Jesus, all things were made. With him, nothing was made that has been made. In him, Jesus, was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. So Jesus, the Word of God, was light, and he's the light of the world, and that light is for all mankind, for everybody. Wherever they are, whoever they are, it's for every, everyone. And then in verse 5, he says, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome did you know that every religion in the world claims to have the words, the words they live by? They, they have the words, and their words usually form the backbone of their religion. And, and every major world religion claims to have the words, and their words are the light in a dark world. But did you know that only in the Christian faith did the word become flesh and dwell among us? That's what happened at the first Christmas. The Word that was God in the beginning, He came, became flesh to dwell among us. Every major religion in the world, they, they, they have words to live by, but the Word is not just something for us to live by, but it is someone who came to live with us. And that's the first Christmas. And that's why the child was called Emmanuel, God with us. So the first Christmas, Jesus is sent into the world. God, God has never done this before. It's, it's never been done like this. This is something new. Here's what it is. It's the ultimate convergence of the Word of God and the light of God. And, and John explains it. We celebrate it as Christmas, but it's a marked moment in time. And God is with us. You say, well, that's really great. But in the concept, God is with us, but Jesus isn't here anymore. You know, with the challenges of our world that we face and, and the delicate trials and troubles that we see and we hear and that we encounter, uh, you know, you say, well, Jesus isn't here anymore. Do you know that when Jesus was on the earth, that it was a difficult time and it was going to get worse? It, in comparison to ours, it would be the same. It's just multiplied now more, but it was the same. And, and, and he's going to leave and he has a discussion with his disciples and he says, hey guys, here's the deal. Things are really going to be bad. They're going to get harder on you. The religious leaders are going to start coming after you. And here's what you need to know, guys. I'm leaving. I'm out of here. Well, what do you mean you're leaving? I have to go. It's really important that I go where the Father is leading me, and you're going to be fine. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean we're going to be fine? Well, here, here, here's why. John 14, 16. I'm going to ask the Father. Jesus said, I'm going to ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. 
Yeah, but we don't want another advocate. We've been with you for years. We, we, we like the way it works because, you know, when we run into trouble, you do a miracle and people believe. And, and when the religious leaders come with questions that we can't answer, you're so smart that you, you don't give them the answers, but you give them more questions and they leave and they're wondering. And, and, and see, we, we don't need another advocate, Jesus. We want you. We want you. Don't leave us. No, I, I'm, I'm going. I, I have to leave. I'm going to send you another advocate. He will be with you forever and he will be known as the spirit of truth. The next verse, verse 17, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and he will be in you if you're a believer. So when Jesus came the first Christmas, this was something new. He came to be with us. God, for the first time, came to be with creation. And we, get to, we got to experience him in the glory of Christ. But Jesus said, wait, I, I'm leaving. I'm going to send the spirit, the spirit of truth, the same spirit that's in God the Father. He's going to be in you. And then Jesus goes on and he says this, and I'm telling you this, that this is good that I go away. Well, what do you mean it's good that you go away? We, we, th th this can't be good. How can this be good? Because unless I go, the advocate can't come. But when I go, I'm going to send him. And here's why it's good for us too. See, he, he was going to send the same spirit that was there with the Father and the Son in the very beginning, who carries the same power and the same authority as God the Father. But listen, he wasn't just going to be with us and limited to a physical human body Jesus had a physical human body. You know, he, he died on this earth. He bled out. And, and he was not going to be confined by that, not just with us, but he would be in us. Boy, well, that's different. Oh, yeah, that's totally new. That's, that's good news. They didn't understand it at this point. They get it later. And Jesus goes on. He says, you know, I've got a lot more to tell you, but I think it's more than you can bear. They, they can't even bear what he's saying right now. And then he, then he goes on. He says, yeah, but when the spirit of truth comes, guys, he'll guide you into all truth. When we run into difficulties in life, when circumstances come, we, we need insight. We need direction. We need wisdom. And he's saying, listen, I'm going to give you wisdom and understanding. I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to give you a guidance system. And if you will lean into my spirit, I'm going to place a spirit inside of you. And by faith, he's going to give you insight, wisdom. And he's not going to speak anything except what he hears the Father speak. So when you hear him talking to you, you're hearing the Father talk to you. And, 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 and listen, he wants to strengthen you and encourage you. He wants to remind you how this all ends. Well, how does it end? Well, if you're in him, it ends that you win with him. And if, and if you're with him, he's going to remind you of the life that he has planned for you on this earth. And if you're with him, he's going to remind you that he has a life of eternity planned with you. And then Jesus ends it like this. And he says, oh, I, I told you these things so that you may have peace. Wait a minute. We, we don't have any peace. We, you're, you're telling us things are going to get rough and hard and you're going to leave us. And we, we've left everything to follow you, and, and, and we, we, you're telling us you're gonna, you, you did this for peace? See, it's like the phrase we hear at Christmas, peace on earth. And we're saying, well, that, that's not a lot of peace going on in our earth. There's not, it, it, how, how does this fit in? Listen, if we're honest, it, it's not about the shopping frenzy and the hustle and the bustle and the stuff. It, it's, it's the difficulties and the pains and the things that we experience and we see in our community, in our culture, in our nation, in our world. And, and, and seldom does it remind us of peace. And Jesus said, I'm telling you th these things that the Spirit will be with you. And if the Spirit is with you, then through the Spirit, you can have my peace. My peace. Because listen, you're going to face circumstances and, and they're around you. But, but regardless of what you're going without this Christmas season, you can have my peace. Not your peace, not the peace of job security, not the, not, not the peace of health, not, not the peace of, of living in a safe community. You know, you can have my peace, and he concludes, and he says, in this world, you're going to have trouble. But take heart, I've overcome the world, the whole world, I've overcome it, it and you can trust me. Because the spirit that I'm going to put in you, it, you have the same power of the Father that was demonstrated in creation when the world was made and mankind was created. And Jesus reminds you, I came and I conquered sin and death on your behalf so you could have life, and I'm going to place my spirit inside of you. You see, peace in the Christmas season or any other season of life doesn't come by solving the problems of the present. 
In this world, you will have trouble, but peace isn't the absence of trouble or problems. Peace doesn't come by resolving the problems of the present, but by resting in the promise of his presence. You see, there are a lot of things right now that are vying for our, are pulling for our attention in your home, in your marriage, in your health, in your finances, in your community, in your world, all of this stuff. I mean, things are pulling for your attention during this time of the year. And the truth is, one of two things will, will, will win your attention this season. Either the problems of the present, immediate problems, future problems that you've figured out or what's going on in your job or whatever, but the problems of the present are the promise of his presence. So let, let me tell you how you get peace. You surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Well, I, well I've heard that before. But, but, but listen to this. Listen to what the prophet said. Isaiah said, for unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. Pay attention to the word government. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Listen, there has always been a direct connection between the government of Jesus and peace. And if you're ruling your own life, if you are ruling by your own government, if you're governing your own life, you will never have the peace of God that passes understanding. You may have temporary peace. You may have peace that comes from job security. You may have peace that comes from a healthy body right now, but you will never have the Prince of Peace unless you surrender your government on his shoulders. And when you surrender your government, your will, your desire to his shoulder, and it's the hardest thing that we do because we have a will, and our will is we want to do it our way. But once we understand that all of this stuff that's circumstantial and all the stuff that we see that we think is peace and that will bring us peace, it will not bring us peace. The only thing that's going to bring us peace is the prince of peace. And when you allow Christ to come in your life, he said, I'm going to put my peace, my spirit, I'm going to put my peace inside of you, but you're going to have to surrender to me. So more peace means more surrender. And if this is a season in your life where you need more of the measure of the presence of God in your life, could it be correlated with you need to surrender more of your life to him? Maybe you need to take your hands off of a lot of things you're trying to hold on to because of insecurity or fear. You need to surrender your life. Hey, listen, I, I'm, I'm going to lead you in a prayer in a moment, and I'm going to pray over you. But, but in my prayer, I, my prayer is not that you win in your problem right now. I'm saying surrender it to him. You need God's peace that only comes through the Spirit of God. And when that Spirit is there, it passes your understanding, means your understanding can't even understand it. And everything that's going on in the natural makes no sense in the spiritual. So how do you hold on to that? It is because I know the Spirit of God, the Prince of Peace is inside of me, and I have a rest. And some of you are going through this season and you're already stressed out. And then after we get into the new year, then you're going to be stressed out again because now you got all this and that and this. And, you know, and, and God didn't create us to live like this. He did not create us to carry our own government. He created us to surrender our government and put it on his shoulders. And when we do, we will have peace. Now, I'm going to challenge you to do something. Two things. Here's the first thing. First thing, I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. I'm going to give you that preference. If you're listening to me and you say, you know, Pastor, I, I don't have the peace. I haven't surrendered. Oh, I, I, I may call myself a Christian, but, but there's turmoil. I, I don't have inner peace, and I need inner peace, and I want it now. I don't want to wait. I don't, I don't want to wait till things get harder or difficult. I want it right now. Well, but I, I want you to know, I, I just want you to lift your hand. If that's you, you, you be honest. Nobody can see you, and nobody but me, and I can hardly see you. So be, be honest. Be honest. Thank you. Hands all over the room. I want to pray for us all, and then I want to lead you in a prayer. God, thank you that you didn't leave us alone. When mankind messed up the world, you didn't just write us off. You went to incredible lengths. You, you came a long way from heaven to earth. You humbled yourself to become one of us. Then after you gave your life and you broke the power of death through the resurrection, you went to sit at the right hand of the Father, and now you're there, and, and you sent us one that will be in us where it's possible 
that you can be in us and in our midst so that every circumstance and everything in life, we have the presence of the living God in us as we go through this life. We thank you for that. We thank you for what you have given us. And we believe, we believe in you. If you raised your hand, in fact, everyone, just pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for loving me. I need to surrender my government to you. I need to, I need to release my will. I need to make you Lord. Not just say you're Lord, but give you lordship. I ask you into my life as Lord. And I ask for the peace of God that goes beyond my understanding. I want your peace now in Jesus' name. Amen. Here's the second challenge. If you prayed that prayer in your minute, there's a card in the seat back in front of you. We're going to sing a song, and this is a song of worship. This is a song of declaration of what you believe. During that song, if you pray that prayer, you fill out that card, and you leave the card in your seat when you leave. We love you. Merry Christmas.
Let's join our hearts together and sing that as a declaration of our faith and the hope that we have in Him. Come on, let's sing this together. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three. the Lord another hand clap tonight. That was awesome. What a celebration all weekend long across all campuses, all over the world. And even to those that are watching online, we're so glad that you joined us here tonight. But I want to give one more challenge before we dismiss tonight. We've got one more thing for you before we leave. That if you prayed that prayer tonight, that as pastor led you in those words, and you know that something is different, that you prayed that prayer and you meant it, that you have a new, fuller understanding of really what this Christmas season is all about, and that is that God, Emmanuel, came to this earth for us to bring us peace, to bring us light. And if that's you here tonight and you prayed that prayer and you meant it in your heart, I want to challenge you one more time to just grab that card and fill it out and then leave it in the seat and we'll come by and pick it up as we leave here tonight and we as a church will reach out to you in the next couple of days and weeks and help you understand more fully what it means to make him the Lord of your life and so I challenge you to do that tonight well like I said we've got one more thing that we want to share with you that you don't want to miss before we leave here tonight but I want to tell you that Christmas at Bay doesn't end tonight on Christmas morning at 10 o'clock in the morning, we are going to have a church-wide Christmas communion that we want you to be a part of. And you can ask how we're going to do that. But we want you to log online to baycc.tv at 10 o'clock in the morning. And Pastor is going to lead us in Christmas communion as a church family something that we do each and every year, and we love it. And, and as you leave here tonight at all the exits, there'll be some buckets, some white buckets, and in those buckets will be some communion cups, and they look like this, and I want you to pick up uh, enough for you, and remember to pick up enough for your family, those that you're gonna be with at 10 o'clock Christmas morning, so that you can be a part at, uh, for, of Christmas communion, 10 o'clock Christmas morning. All right. Well, I think that we just need one more round of applause to get us fired up to head out of here and let's celebrate Christmas.